Good day, everyone. This video talks about the supply and demand for money. Okay. So money facilitates the flow of resources in the circular model of macroeconomy. Not enough money will slow down the economy. And too much money can cause inflation because of higher price levels. Either way, monitoring the supply and demand for money is vital for the economy central bank's monetary policy, which aims to stabilize price levels and to support economic growth. Okay, so let's start first with the money supply. Although the general description of money is relatively straightforward. The precise definition of the overall supply of money is complex because of the wide variety of forms of money in modern economics. So the key measures for money supply are first, M1. This refers primarily to money used as a medium of exchange. So the narrowest measure of the money supply, the M1, it includes currency in circulation, okay? The demand deposits, other checkable deposits, and the traveler's checks, right? So here's the clue used as a medium of exchange. Next, M2, okay? This refers primarily to money used as a store of value, all right? So M2, in addition to M1, this measure includes money held in savings deposits money market deposit accounts, non-institutional money market mutual funds, and other short-term money market assets. So what are the examples of those? You have overnight euro dollars. Okay, next is M3. M3, this refers primarily to money used as a unit of value. So in addition to M2, this measure, M3, includes the financial institutions. Example, large denomination time deposits and term euro dollars. Okay. Next is L. Okay. In addition to M3, this measure includes liquid and near liquid assets. Example, short-term treasury notes, high-grade commercial paper, and bank acceptance notes. All right. So, as we can see here, okay, take, remember, from our discussion about the concept and functions of money, that money serves three purposes. We have medium of exchange store of value and the unit of value or the unit of account so with the measures uh, key measures for money supply so medium of exchange store of value unit of value still exists okay so the deposits of the public at banks and other depository institutions are considered money and are therefore included in the M1 money supply. So if the public withdraws money from bank deposits to hold money as personal currency, or put that under their pillows, under the mattress. So this increase in inactive money. 
will affect the bank's ability to extend loans and will influence the supply of money. Okay? Because take note that um, banks okay, are examples of financial uh, institutions. So people who have uh, who needs funds, okay, they go to financial institutions to borrow money. So if you're excess funds, if you have excess funds, are you and you are going to just put that in your piggy bank or under your pillow, or you're going to frame that. So the those who need funds cannot borrow it, okay? So your money cannot circulate, right? So some common forms of public payment may not count as part of the supply of money. So check payments from one person to another are not included in the money supply. Why? Because check merely transfers money without being a net addition to the supply of money. So it just transfers money from one person to another, from company A to company B, or from uh, Maria to company A, like that. So consumer credit cards are not included in the money supply. They are considered instant loans to consumers, and therefore, are not a net addition to the money supply. So the Banco Central ng Pilipinas is responsible for determining the supply of money. It uses daily open market operations to influence the creation of money by banks and to guide the availability of money in the economy. BSP or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas also has an impact on the creation of money by banks through reserve requirements and a discount rate that is the interest rate at which banks can borrow from the BSP as a lender of last resort. So changes in the supply of money will affect the interest rate and therefore the cost of borrowing money. This will have an impact on consumption and investment levels in the economy. All right, so that's all with the supply of money. Now let's go to the demand for money. So there are three sources of the demand for money. First, we have the transaction demand. So money demanded for day-to-day -day payments through balances held by households and firms instead of stocks, bonds, or other assets. So this kind of demand varies with the GDP or the gross domestic product. It does not depend on the rate of interest. Next is the precautionary demand. Money demanded as a result of unanticipated payments. This kind of demand varies with GDP. And the third is the speculative demand. So money demanded because of expectations about interest rates in the future. So speculative expectations about interest rates in the future. This means that people will decide to expand their money balances and hold off on bank purchases if they expect interest rates to rise. This kind of demand has a negative relationship with the interest rate. So the rate of interest is the price paid in the money market for the use of money or loans. So the rate is a percentage of the amount borrowed, all right. So here, okay, so let's talk about opportunity costs and rates. So if a person holds 
1,000 pesos in currency, the opportunity cost of holding the money is the interest that could be earned, okay? For example, on the 1,000 pesos in an interest-bearing account. So the opportunity cost of holding money goes up, okay? So here is that. The opportunity cost of holding money goes up if the interest rate increases, which may lead to decreased consumption and increased saving, all right? So conversely, if the interest rate is low, okay, if this is low, not increasing, it is relatively cheap to borrow money, right? And the quantity of money demanded goes up, okay? Therefore, so what's the relationship, okay? Therefore, the demand for currency has a negative relationship with the interest rate. So changes in other factors will lead to shifts in the demand curve for money. Increases in the economy's price level will increase the demand for money. Note that the demand for money is tied to the interest rate, not the price level. So if the real GDP increases, the demand for money increases because of the higher demand for products. Also, when banks develop new money products that allow for issuer low cost withdrawal, the demand for money will decrease, such as banks offering savings accounts with shorter or less stringent time deposit requirements and lower penalties for withdrawal. Okay. So special thanks to uh, the author of the uh, book, which I referenced my discussion, the video from the Financial Management Principles of Applications written by Cabrera Elementa. Okay, thank you so much for watching the video.